If you're thinking about buying the MetaQuest Pro, hold up. First, let me tell you 50 things you need to know that may influence your buying decision. The Quest Pro is $1,500, and that's more than three times the price of the average VR headset. In the box, you'll find what you'd expect. The headset and controllers, a charging dock, light blockers, a wall charger, cables, cleaning cloth, manuals, stylus tips, headset cover, and a cable clip. The Quest Pro has 10 sensors total, five exterior cameras on the outside, which produce higher quality visuals than the Quest 2 to help you see what's around you while wearing the headset, including your own hands. In some apps, you'll have the option to use your hands instead of the physical controllers, making this a great option for mixed reality. It also has five interior sensors to track your face and eye movements. So when you're an avatar in VR, when you change your facial expression, it looks more realistic. Quest Pro comes with one single 256 gigabyte storage option with 12 gigabytes of RAM and a Snapdragon XR2 Plus processor. It has new pancake lenses, which reduce the overall thickness of the headset significantly. Mm, pancake. However, the overall weight is still more than the Quest 2. They move the battery to the back of the strap for overall better weight distribution. The battery should last around two and a half hours in use and even longer with face and eye tracking turned off. Quest Pro has built-in spatial audio support through speakers inbuilt into the arms. And these have a really full rich range of sound with palpable bass and overall a much better audio experience than Quest 2. It also comes with two 3.5 millimeter jacks if you prefer to use headphones. When fitting the Quest Pro, it will prompt you to do a calibration check to make sure it fits snugly on your head. Although for some reason, it always tells you to move it when it feels comfortable and when you do, it feels wrong. So I'd probably just ignore that. It has a small dial at the front of the headset that changes the lens distance, meaning how far the pancake lenses are from your eyes. This means if you wear glasses, you can move the lenses far enough away so they don't scratch the headset or your glasses. You can also set the interpupillary distance by pushing the eyepieces left and right until the screen appears in focus. Although annoyingly, I found this moves every time you take the headset off and put it back on again. So you'll need to reset it. It doesn't take long, but it would have been nice if they fixed it in place once you've set your setting. Once you've got the headset on though, it is pretty comfortable because of the forehead cushion on the front, which will also leave you with less messy hair than having a strap going from front to back. The Quest Pro also has a more open design that lets air flow around your eyes and nose to reduce lens fogging. Also, there is a pretty significant gap underneath the headset, letting natural light in, which is good because it gives your eyes more natural light, which makes the screen easier to look at for long periods. But it's also bad because it's also not as fully immersive as having everything covered. So while it is comfortable wearing it for shorter periods, around 20 minutes, I've found anything more than that. And you start really feeling the weight of the headset on your head, which eventually gets uncomfortable, especially if you're doing something that requires you to look around a lot. Now let's talk about what it's like to look inside of the metal. The Quest Pro. The lenses are 1800 by 1920 pixels per eye with a horizontal field of view of 106 degrees and a vertical field of view of 96 degrees. The LCD displays also supposedly have 37% more pixels per inch as well as 75% more contrast than the Quest 2. However, for some reason, the refresh rate is down from the Quest 2. It used to be 120 hertz, now it's 90 hertz. I would say that the Quest Pro generally has sharper menus and imagery than the Quest 2 as well as slightly better colors and contrast. Is it enough to switch from this to this? Not really, but it is a small improvement. Can you get headaches with the Quest Pro? Well, yes, you can get them with any VR headset and the Quest Pro is no different. However, due to better optics, they may be less frequent than other headsets. Now let's talk about the controllers and the Quest Pro controllers are lighter and less cumbersome than the Quest 2 controllers. As you see, they don't have the big white rings and they also seem to be made of slightly better material. Something really cool about these controllers is they have three cameras on them, two on the front and one on the top. This adds to the overall spatial tracking ability of the Quest Pro, creating a better overall mixed reality experience. Inside these controllers, you'll find Snapdragon 662 processors, as well as new built-in batteries. Yes, that means no more AA batteries. These things will last you around eight hours per charge. They have what Meta calls true touch haptics, which basically means a better vibrational experience. And FYI, you can buy them separately and pair them with the Quest 2, even though 
they're basically the price of the entire headset. Speaking of accessories, the Quest Pro comes with a really cool charging dock that you put on your desk and you just place the headset down to charge it. The controllers will magnetically stick together and slot in right in the middle. If you were to travel with the Quest Pro, it does come with two cords to help you charge if you didn't have the charging station. The first one is a six foot USB-C cable, which can be plugged directly into the headset to charge it while you use it. The other is an individual charging cable for the controllers. There's only one though, so you have to charge the controllers one at a time. In the box, it comes with stylus tips as well, which you attach to the base of the controller if you want to write or draw in VR. It'll also come with magnetic light blockers in the box that will partially block out the light coming from the sides. You can buy Meta's $50 full light blocker for a darker VR experience if you prefer, or you could just close the curtains. This is a pretty cool one. Apple users, you can use your Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse with the Quest Pro if you're working in VR and want to use them as you normally would. And the reason you do this in VR and not in real life is... When using the headset, pass-through mode, aka looking at things that are in your immediate surroundings through the cameras, is generally pretty good. The quality isn't amazing, but it's definitely a step up from the Quest 2. Well, at least when you keep a distance, for anything up close, the lines will shift and it starts looking weird. Pass-through mode is great though for mixed reality apps, and there are a few of them out there. Most of them are based around productivity and work, but I do see this as one of the reasons you consider getting a headset like the Quest Pro. One of the apps I've found most interesting is the Immersed app, which allows you to have multiple computer screens surrounding your real life computer. Will this make you more productive? Uh maybe. Another one is Horizon Workrooms, which is like a virtual workspace where you set up a desk and you can work as if you were at your real life desk, except it's obviously a lot more virtualized. And while it's a cool concept, it's still got a ways to go yet before you go to this over the real thing. And it is right now a bit of a convoluted process, getting set up, being productive at your desk. Once you're in it, it's amazing and fully immersive, but you will need to be patient in the setup stages. Right now, there aren't too many apps in the Quest Pro section of the Meta Store. Since this is a new device and it has capabilities the previous headsets haven't had. Therefore, developers haven't been working on the apps for long enough, meaning the choice is a little bit limited for now. There are some cool ones though, if you like experimenting with new and semi-futuristic tech. So I think you can probably tell they're targeting the Quest Pro for business use, since most of the apps specifically made for this are business and productivity based. And is that what people are using it for? Nah. Most people that have bought the Quest Pro are still using it for gaming. And from what I've seen from some of the Facebook groups, they're loving it. The headset is definitely improved over the Quest 2, so if you're a hardcore gamer, it will be a more comfortable and better gaming experience than before. If you're a casual gamer though, there would be no reason to buy the Quest Pro over the Quest 2, since this really does deliver a good enough experience for gaming. Unless you have the money to spend and you're curious and just want to get it, then don't let me stop you. As a bit of a conclusion to this video, I do think the hardware improvements are there since the Quest 2 to justify how much they're charging, but it's more or less the same software with the same apps as before. So most of the money you're paying for this headset is literally just in the headset. It doesn't really feel complete yet. It's targeted at business and a lot of those business apps are still in the early stages of production and there's a lot that still needs to be done to make make this an obvious purchase. Don't get me wrong, if you get it and use it, it'll be amazing. It's just not yet a shut up and take my money type of device, but it totally could be because software updates will come to the Quest Pro and it will get better and better over time. So I'll be sure to share any big updates that come to the Quest Pro on my channel. That said, rumor has it the Quest 3 will be coming in 2023 and for people that aren't sold on the Quest Pro yet, you may wanna wait for that. It will be a more affordable price and probably targeted more towards the casual user than the Pro. That's it for this video. If you have anything else you wanna to add to the list, let me know down below. See you next time.